fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. days of the West, when lawlessness and shooting hell sway, a powerful and mysterious organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up, seeking to destroy the United States of America. The government tried by every method within its power to discover more about this outlaw organization, but to no avail, until at last the president himself summoned the masked rider of the plains to lead the fight against this mysterious foe, to help preserve the Union and make the western frontier safe for the pioneers. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for St. Louis. The president wants to see us. Hello, Silver! Away! <laughs> Under cover of darkness, the Lone Ranger was holding a series of meetings with the President of the United States. The President was in a closely guarded railway train on a railroad siding just beyond St. Louis. Only a few trusted men knew of these meetings. Each morning before dawn, the masked man left the President and went to the prairie in the campfire Tonto tended. But now it was night again. The sun was down. Tonto accompanied the masked man toward another meeting. You better not come any further, Tonto. Here on, I ride alone. There's a very close guard kept on the train. Soldiers all around. It's arranged that I meet the president's secretary beyond the guarded area, and he takes me through. Ah. Uh, president want to see only you. Only a few of those with him know about our meetings. I leave Silver a half mile from the train and go ahead on foot, carefully so I'm not seen. Ah. Uh, Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto? This powwow heap important, huh? Very. What it mean? What happen in West. Nobody is quite sure what's going on. I spoke to the president last night. Ah. There are vague rumors about an uprising in the West. A legion of bad men, outlaws, gunfighters. It's got something to do with a black arrow. Black arrow? Last night, when I was in the special car, I was shown a black arrow. But we don't know what it means. Only that in some way it signifies treason and rebellion. Oh. Yes, treason and rebellion against the United States. And there's some vast evil force at work, Tonto. Oh. West, wild country. Plenty room for bad thing. Keep a night watch, Kimosabe. Our camp is close to the Overland Trail from St. Louis to the west. Light no fire and keep your eyes open. Ah. Uh-huh. If you see any suspicious travelers, take a closer look. It may just happen that you'll learn something. Above all, remember the Black Arrow. Ah. Uh-huh. Tonto, watch till you come back. The army garrison is sounding taps, Tonto. Time for my meeting. Oh, Tonto, help too. The president already knows he can count on you, Tonto. Adios. Get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. Swiftly, the great stallion galloped through the darkness toward the waiting train. When he was several hundred yards away, the ranger spoke to Silver. Oh, boy. I need cottonwoods. 
The masked man slipped the reins over Silver's head. Then he left the stallion and headed for the train on foot. He knew the great horse would be waiting for him when he returned. Using all his skill and trail lore, the masked man moved through the darkness like a gray ghost. He passed scattered groups of men. Once he was less than 20 feet from a campfire, but no one saw him. Finally, he reached the spot where he was to meet the secretary. In front of him, two men stood in the shadows. He could hear them talking. Well, I asked you a question. Is this your post? No, sir. Orders were to keep away from the train unless summoned. Your name is... Uh, Flint, sir. Flint. All right, Flint. Back to your quarters. Yes, sir. I... Well? Well, I just came wandering down to the sea, sort of. That's all, sir. Uh, there's rumors around, sir. Is it true the president's on that train? That's all, Flint. Back to your post. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Flint. Flint. Second company, Cheney's Grays. I'll make a note of that. Mr. Secretary. What? Who's that? You're expecting me. The Lone Ranger. I was told the fewer people who saw me, the better. Yes. But for a man to come within two paces without my knowing, it's... It's amazing. I think the secret will be kept. But here, put this cloak around you. Keep your hat pulled down. I'll take you through the guards to the train, straight to the president. In the darkness, covered with the cape, no soldier questioned the secretary's companion. In a moment, they were aboard the guarded train. The Lone Ranger stepped into a railroad coach fitted as a private car and toward a desk lighted by a single lamp. The man's face was in shadow, but there was no mistaking his importance and dignity. The Lone Ranger's voice was deeply respectful. Mr. President. Good evening. Very well, Fleming, you may leave us. Yes, sir. I shall be outside the door. Lone Ranger, when you first were summoned here, we discussed this. The Black Arrow. The Black Arrow. As you know, we take the gravest view of this arrow. We've heard rumors. We believe this arrow to be a symbol. A symbol for a group of evil men who conspire to turn against their country and make themselves rulers of the West who conspire to foster rebellion and secession among the pioneers so they may rob our country of the prairie land and the land across the Rockies. Mr. President, my allegiance is yours and my country's. Tonto and I are at your service. There are many scouts and brave men of the West who are willing to serve. Bill Cody, Bill Hickok, others, the frontier scouts whom I sent out to carry the word to you. But those men are known. They go unmasked. Yes, sir. They would be identified at once. Whereas you wear a mask. If necessary, you could mix with the outlaws as one of them. I've done that before. <laughs> so I've heard. Lone Ranger, I know you wear your mask to aid your country. There are two or three in my inner council who disagree. But I believe if anyone can carry out this mission, you are the one. I warn you, it's dangerous. Tonto and I are used to danger, sir. Good. Now, listen carefully. Before you were summoned, the Army Intelligence Staff sent out four men, secretly and separately. They were Army men, but they did not wear Army clothes. They dressed as prospectors, cattlemen, gunmen. They were told to report what they learned. Not one of them has reported back. By telegraph wire, by letter of hand or in person. Not one. You think they are dead? Dead or missing, I don't know. The last one to go was Major Connell. He posed as a gunfighter. He meant to start out from Laramie. It will be your mission to find him or one of the other three. Perhaps then we shall know how to proceed against this, this infamous legion of the Black Arrow. Mr. President, Tonto and I will do our best. Here is a list of names. Memorize them and destroy the list. They are trusted and confidential aides through whom you can report to me. I shall be waiting. Goodbye and God speed you. Keep traveling, Silver. We're heading for camp. We've got to see Tano and tell him about our mission. Keep riding, old fella. Keep. Aye. Silver, that's Tano. What's he doing away from the camp? Aye. Come on, Silver. Something must be wrong. Faster. 
Sutter, what is it? And me watch overland trail, like you say. Me fine man. A man? Ah. Uh, him, uh, this one not on trail. Him creep through sagebrush. Tonto hear him and Tonto catch him. Not on the trail? Oh. Him stay off trail for reason. Sounds like trouble. Was he stalking you? Did he have a gun? Oh, him not have gun. Tonto, not sure, him outlaw. You aren't sure? No. That's why Tonto come to you. Man, him plenty sick. Him at camp now. Weak, tired out. Tonto put him on blanket. Come for you plenty quick. Who is he? Did he say anything? Anything at all? Oh, Tonto not no name. Man not answer. All him do is say two words over, over. Just two words. Yes? Him say... Black Arrow. Black Arrow. That's right. Come on, Toto. Hurry, back to the camp. I've got to see that man at once. Get him up, Scout. Well, Silver, boy! on blanket for Tonto to leave him. His clothes are in rags, Kimosabe. Look at his boots, nothing but patches. Ah, him travel plenty far. And his knees, his pants are worn through, the skin's raw and torn. Oh, he's been crawling for days. Him not have strength to walk. Uh-huh. He's nothing but skin and bones, almost a skeleton. How any man could keep going in his condition, I can't understand. Uh, here, here, this Indian medicine me fix. You make him drink. Here, here, drink this. It's good for you. Oh, no. No, bad water. Oh, we're your friends. It's good for you. Now, here, drink it. Now, who are you? What's your name? No, can't talk. Mustn't talk. Who is he, Kimosabe? Oh, me not know. Me look for name on clothes, find nothing. Tell us, who are you? Oh, mustn't tell. Tell nothing. Nobody. <laughs> Where am I? The Overland Trail near St. Louis. St. Louis. Must get to St. Louis. Must get to St. Louis. Oh, wait. Don't try to get up your week. You need rest and food. Oh, can't rest. Been traveling for weeks, months. I must go on. Let me up. I must go on. Uh... Listen to me. Tonto and I will help you. We'll take you wherever you want to go. Why, in your condition, you couldn't get 50 yards without collapsing. Ah, now you rest. Tonto to give you medicine. You feel better soon. Then Tonto to give give you food. Little bit of time. Soon you will you'll be all right. No time. Just hurry, make my report. Tell no one. Tell no one. Secret mission. Secret mission. Tonto, did you hear that? Uh, secret mission. This may be the very man we were to seek out. We may have stumbled across him without. Listen. Can you hear me? Secret mission. Must get to... to... When Tonto found you, you spoke two words. You said, Black Arrow. The Black Arrow. Uh, Black Arrow. That's it, Black... No. Secret. Say nothing. Say nothing. Listen to me. We're friends. Is your name Major Connell? You... You are friends? Yes... I am Major Connell. Major Connell, the president is in St. Louis. The president? It's still a few hours to dawn. You rest for a while and eat some food. And when you're stronger, we'll take you to him. President? Here? St. Louis? Oh, thank heaven. I can tell him my mission. Tell him what I know about... about the black. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. With the aid of Tonto's Indian medicine and food, the exhausted Major regained some of his strength. It was still several hours before sunup 
when the Lone Ranger lifted him into Silver's saddle. Uh, there, Major. Can you hold on to the saddle horn? Yes, I think so. I'll ride behind the saddle. Easy, Silver. Me make blanket roll. All signs of our camp are gone? Ah, hunt a scatter fire, bury ashes. Good. We won't be coming back here. Well, we'll go slowly because of you, Major. You're certain the president is here? He's on a private train on the siding outside the city. When we get near the train, we'll leave the horses with Tonto, and I'll carry you to the train. I think I'll be able to walk. Major, you have a long story to tell. You'll need all your strength. All right, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. All right, Silver. You might get through alone, not with me. There are sentries. It will be difficult, Major. The secretary isn't expecting me back this time. We'll have to get aboard and rouse him. Halt! Who goes there? Leave this to me. Major Connell, urgent. Major Connell. Advance, sir, to be recognized. All right, sentry, walk your post. I know there have been definite orders to allow me through any time of the day or night. Yes, sir. You may pass. The sentry stepped aside. Helping the major along, the masked rider hurried to the train and into the car next to the president's. This is the secretary's compartment. He's awake now. I hear him. Yes, what is it? Mr. Secretary, it's urgent. The Lone Ranger. But I thought you'd left on your mission. I have someone with me, sir. Someone with you? It's dark. I'll get a light. No light, sir. We must be cautious. Mr. Secretary, the Lone Ranger has brought me back. I, I must see the president. Connell. Major Connell, is that you? I must see the president. Yes, gentlemen, at once. I'll wake him up immediately. The president is ready. Come. The three men crossed to the next car, through the door and down the length of the car. And once again, the Lone Ranger found himself facing the desk with a shaded lamp and the president behind it, his face in shadow. Major Cuddle, we had feared for your safety. We welcome your return. I am at your service, Mr. President. You look as if you had been through a terrible ordeal. Tonto found him barely conscious, Mr. President, but he was still crawling towards St. Louis. I understand. Major, do you feel strong enough to tell us what happened to you? I'll rest much better when it's said, Mr. President. You understand our need for haste? Yes, sir. Very well. Suppose you tell us in your own words, Major. If you feel weak, you may stop. I'll be able to complete my report, sir. As you know, when I left, I discarded my army uniform and put on Western attire. I rode to Laramie. I took to the name of Burley and posed as a gunfighter and gambler. It took a while, but apparently my reputation was established. Because one night, about a week later, a group of men burst into my hotel room while I lay sleeping. What, what in blazes is this? Your hands up your gun belt, Burley. Why, you, what's your smile for? What We're are you taking you for a trip? Hit him with a gun. No, you don't. You. Ah! When I came to, the blindfold was on my eyes. My hands were bound behind my back. I was in the saddle. One man was with me. I don't know how long we rode. It might have been for a day, for a week. We might have gone in circles. All I know is I was in continual darkness and that we seemed to be going up and up. The air was cold and thin. I recall that before I dropped off again. Then the next thing I knew... The horses were gone. I was standing. The blindfold was gone from my eyes. I was in a great rocky cavern. Men were all around me with black handkerchiefs on their faces. At least a hundred men. There were two great fires at the far end of the cave. Between them I saw a man on a platform. He too was masked. Then I saw that the fires cast a shadow behind him flickering shadow that joined together the form of Black Arrow. I, I was in the cave of the Black Arrow. We've got organization with brains and money. We're going to take over the West for ourselves. The army is scattered. They'll never know 
winter wear is like India uprisings, stagecoach robberies, prairie fires. We'll use bad men and bankers, and no one will ever know. We're the legion of the black arrows. We'll tear the stars and stripes off every flagpole west of the Mississippi. We'll build an empire of our own. Yay! Death to our enemies. Hooray! The West shall be ours. Hooray! The legion of the black arrows. Hooray! Those were the aims of the Black Arrow. Murder, bloodshed, and treason. And then the meeting broke up, and the men separated. All right, Burley. Huh? Come along. Somebody wants to talk to you. This way. I was led to a dark corner of the cave, away from the men. I could hear the rumble of a river that flowed out of one wall of the cave and disappeared in the other. I was brought face to face with a man wearing a black kerchief. He might have been the leader who spoke before. I'm not sure. This is Burley? Yes, sir. Hey, look, what's this all about? Am I low? Quiet, Burley, you... listen. You were brought here on our orders. For the ten days you were in Laramie, we watched you. We decided you were the sort of man we need in the Black Arrow. You're smart, you're an outlaw, you're quick in the trigger. You want to join the Legion of the Black Arrow? <laughs> well, yeah, I'd like the idea, but suppose I do. You join or you die. You mean you'd murder me? It's midnight now. Dawn will come in five hours. You have until then to make up your mind. <laughs> well, it sounds keno to me. <laughs> Black Arrow. Hmm? You'll stay in this cave. You'll not go into the valley outside. Do you no good? There's only one trail out, and that's closely guarded. No one has ever escaped from here. You have until dawn. After he left me, I knew I had to get away. I went to the cave entrance, but I was not allowed to go into the valley. I knew he'd meant it when he said it would do me no good. For hours, I walked in the cave, trying to find a way out. Then, just as dawn lightened the entrance from the valley, I saw an underground river at one corner of the cave. As the men came toward me, I ran for it. It was almost certain suicide, but I had to take the chance. Get him! He's trying to get out of the river! Shoot! Oh. Oh. We've got him. He's in the underground river. If he ain't dead now, he will be. He'll never get out alive. Look, his body is drifting under the rock. But somehow I did get out alive. I don't know how. I was wounded and half dead. Indians must have found me in the bank someplace miles away. I remember things only in dreams. I was delirious. All I know is I... Heading east. Always east. Oh, that's all. Then Tonto found me and the Lone Ranger brought me here. That's all, Mr. President. Major Cuddle, there's no need for me to tell you how brave you've been. I'll get some rest. Thank you, sir. I am tired. Come. There's a berth in the next car. Oh, there's, there's one thing more, Mr. President. In the cave, I... I noticed the members of the Legion have, have a black arrow tattooed on the left wrist. It might help in identifying. In ident... Carlo! Oh. Carlo! He's fainted. Let me. I can get him to bed. It's beginning to get light, Lone Ranger. You must be away from here by dawn. Yes, Mr. President. I understand my mission. The Legion of the Black Arrow has a secret meeting place in Leda. You must find both. You must work alone. You report to none but me and my chosen aides. The union must remain one and indivisible. You must dedicate your life and that of your Indian companion to this task to save your country from treason and sedition. Tonto and I are Americans, Mr. President. I leave at once. The masked man took his leave. Once again, he slipped through the line of sentries and made his way to Tonto and the horses. There he told him briefly what the president had said, 
silenced. Behind them, as they talked in low tones, they could hear the stir of the encampment. So, that is our mission, Tonto. We must not fail. Ah, uh, we find Black Arrow. We're heading west. A long way west. The scout ready? Uh, scout him ready. Reveille. The camp will be awake very soon. Time to ride. Hip. After me, Kimosabe. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. That's them, sir. That's a lone ranger in this park. We're a little late, Flint. I had to be very careful leaving the train. I was able to learn enough to know that the lone ranger's been given a mission to destroy our legion. There they are against the horizon, sir. I can... No, get... don't shoot, Flint. But we... No, are... you'd miss at this distance. Besides, it would rouse everyone. The president would wonder why I'm out here. He might get suspicious of me. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. What do we do? Get your horse. Ride at once for the Valley of the Black Arrow. You mean I'm to desert? Yes, desert the army. Get there and report to our leader. This masked man gets around a lot. If we can discover his real identity, penetrate his disguise, it'll help us. We can use him as a, a decoy. Kino, I'll pass the word. Nothing can defeat the Black Arrow. Nothing. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 